What's happening guys, Scott from A Hornet's Nest. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday. And today in episode three, I'm gonna show you how to make and 3D print a cockpit, very budget friendly, so you don't have to go out and feel the need to buy yourself a laser cutter because that's what you see everyone else doing. A laser cutter definitely has a time and place, but if you wanna make a cockpit on a budget, you don't have the space or the facilities to house a laser cutter, this here is gonna provide you with some really good results. This one here is a laser cut takeoff panel from the F-18 Hornet. And the reason I've chosen this, it's got a good amount of text, good coloring, and I wanna show you how to replicate this on a very budget friendly way. And you're probably gonna be able to make one of these for about $4. So what we're gonna to have to do for this is jump on into Fusion so I can show you how to export the stickering that you're gonna stick onto the front plate and then how to export it as a mesh so you can 3D print it. Now I'm actually going to 3D print this using two filaments. I'm gonna use white, as well as I'm gonna use luminescent green, which is glow in the dark, and we're gonna see if we can get a bit of natural backlighting using glow in the dark filament. So hopefully that works. I'm pretty excited to see how it turns out. So let's jump on into Fusion, get into it, and make it a nice short tutorial. Here we are in Fusion, we've got the takeoff panel loaded up and usually I make my panels in a two panel system. A two mil white acrylic for the text, and then a three mil translucent acrylic for the diffuser panel. But because we're 3D printing, we can merge those two layers together and create a five millimeter thick structure. And that houses all of our nut housing, as well as it has ample diffusing capability if you wanted a backlight in the future. Now everything here is ready to go. We've got a good color yellow, the black, the text, it's all looking beautiful. But what we're gonna do and change for the 3D printing version is we're gonna actually make the body of the piece crystal clear. We're gonna use glass as the material instead of white. So to do that, we're gonna press A for appearance. We're gonna select the glass and we're gonna drag and drop it onto the body and components, not the faces, just the body. And we're gonna drag and drop it. It's gonna give us a warning saying, remove appearances applied to face. We don't wanna do that. We wanna keep all the nice text and that. So we're just gonna press keep. Now we're gonna press escape to get rid of that. And now we have what looks to be the exact same, but the difference is when Fusion renders this picture, it's not gonna give you a really off white. As Fusion says, that's what I think your white plastic should look like. We don't want that. We want the white of our paper being the, the color of the text. So that's what the glass is for. And now we can go into saving this as a mesh so we can go 3D printed. So to save this as a mesh, we're gonna right click on the takeoff panel component in the browser and click save as mesh. The save as mesh dialog shows up on the right of the screen. We want it to be STL binary. I'm using millimeters as the unit type and we want the refinement to be high to get a high quality or a high poly count mesh for really nice 3D printing. We're gonna go press okay. And now we're just gonna go save it in a folder of your choice. So now what we're gonna do is use Fusion's drawing program to be able to import this onto an A4 piece of paper and then we can go print it on a sticker sheet. Now, if you're not using Fusion and you're using something else, it may have a very similar feature but if not, you can still put this onto an image processing software like Microsoft Paint or Photoshop. You would scale it yourself and then you're gonna print it out just like we are. So to do that, we're gonna right click our takeoff panel and click create drawing. We've got one component selected and we're just using the default options that Fusion provides us clicking okay. Now it's gonna give us an option of what scale we want. So we can now select scale one to one, and then we're just gonna place it in the middle of our piece of paper. We want the style to be shaded. We want one to one scale, and the tangent edges can be off. We're then gonna press okay. And we're just gonna go and delete any unnecessary graphics on this piece of paper. So it's just our takeoff panel. And now there we have it, a one-to-one -one image on a piece of paper that we can go print. And you can use this on white normal print paper and use glue to stick it on, or you can go get yourself an A4 size sticker sheet and use it with its adhesive backing. 
So all we've got to go do now is press export to PDF, all sheets, and now you need to remove line weights. Otherwise, it will make your text look very bad because it wants to put a thick line on every edge. We don't want that, we just want its natural size. Then we're going to press OK. And then we're going to call this decal printout. Alrighty, saving that, now we can load up into our 3D slicer to prepare our model for printing. I'm using Allegu's version of Cura because I'm using the Allegu Neptune 4 Pro, but most of the options are pretty similar. Pressing open, selecting the panel we want to use, and click open. It's going to load it in the orientation that you built it in Fusion. To change that, we're going to select our panel. We've got the rotate option on the left hand side, and we're going to select the face that we want to align with the build plate. We want to take the text plate, lay that flat so it builds upwards. That way we get a beautiful smooth finish on the front of the panel and not on the back where we're not going to see it. So select face and then we're just going to select where it goes and it pops it nicely on the bed. The only options you need to worry about that I'm using to make it nice and backlightable is a 0.2 millimeter layer height and a three count of top layers and bottom layers. It doesn't need to be strong, this top plate. It's not taking any structural load. It is purely decorative. So you can make it as thin as you want on those top and bottom layers. The thinner those layers, the more backlight that's gonna come through, the less heat that's gonna build up and the less potential for warping. So three for top and bottom layers. I have an infill density of 7.5% and the pattern I'm using is triangles. I'm printing this at 230 degrees Celsius with a build plate temperature of 60, and I've found that for your white and luminescent filaments, you do need to print a little bit hotter than you would with your grays and your blacks because of just their structure of what they made up of. So looking back into our Cura program, we can hide all the settings and press slice. It's now showing that it's going to take one hour and seven minutes using 37 grams of filament and generally you get about a kilo on a reel. So you can make as many panels as you want on a single reel of filament and it's just so, so cheap. We're going to go preview and we can now see what it's going to print like. If we go to one of the middle layers, you can now see why I use triangles. There is no infill pattern here that is blocking the backlight. And the 7.5% is the least amount of infill percentage that you're gonna to need to keep the panel somewhat stable or somewhat strong. We can zoom back out and we can press save as TFT or whatever option your G code is for your printer. Clicking save, that's about it. We're good to go. We're gonna take that to the printer now print off our sticker sheet and I'll see you again when we're at the model desk ready to assemble it. Alrighty, welcome back. Here we are at the workstation with our freshly made 3D prints. Now, the thing I love about the Allegri Neptune 4 and really any printer that has flexi plates is when you've got really flat, wide models like this, you can just snap them right off and you're not gonna need to use any spatulas to get them off. So, we've got our print here. This is the front panel where the text is gonna go for the takeoff panel. And we can already notice that we've got these brim remains hanging on to the print and they're not great. They they're annoying to deal with, but in my time printing, I've found that you can use a deburring tool, which I showed in episode two, which just runs along the edge and you can take that excess brick off. And it makes print cleanup so much quicker. So let's clean up the edges of these prints and then we can go and start taping them. And it also gives it a very nice, almost curved edge. It makes it look pretty legit for a very cheap printed panel. 
That's looking pretty nice. Just get rid of all the fluffs that are just gonna stick onto it with static, but it looks pretty good. So we are going to now apply some blue masking tape or painter's tape to the front and the back where we don't want the black paint to go. And that is so we have a nice diffused panel for any backlighting that you may choose. Now, if you're not planning on backlighting it, just print it in black. It's, there is really no need to print it white, paint it, save yourself a step, save yourself the time, just go with black. But if there is a chance of you wanting to backlight these, spend the extra little time doing it this way and you're gonna be really pleased. Alrighty, so that is the front and the back of the text plate done. What we're gonna do now is just rub our finger where the switch holes are and just outline them. So what we're gonna do is grab our scalpel and we are just going to run around them. And the reason I do that is I wanna paint this area as well black to save a lot of cleanup time. So what we're going to do now is take this down to the paint station, get a couple of coats of black paint on it, and when you're painting these, you want to apply one or two light misty coats first, because we're not priming this, we're just putting paint straight onto plastic, and if you don't have a high quality paint, it might run or smudge or tear, so that's what we're going to do, a couple of light misty coats, and then we're going to put the final coat on. If you're backlighting, put that extra coat on that you think you don't need, trust me, you do need it. If you're not going to backlight these one or two coats, it's just fine. Now when you are cutting these, you can either use a really sharp scalpel, I'm using an 11 blade on a Swan Morton handle, or you could use scissors. I think scissors might actually be a bit quicker, but I like using a blade. When you do cut it out, cut the external shape out first, don't cut out the switch holes because we're going to use the same technique that we used to run around the mask with the switch and it's going to give you that perfect circle. Don't try to sit here and like cut out the, the circle with a blade, it's just not going to look neat. Let the print help you with that. And you don't need to be super neat on this. Well, you do, but don't obviously leave a ton of white around the edges. But if you've got a little bit of white sticking out, no stress at all, you can always dab it with a Sharpie marker or some black paint. Alrighty, that's done. So all we've got to do now is wait for the paint. I'll see you soon. And then we're going to get onto finishing the build. Alrighty, welcome back to the build. Here we are with our two panels made for the takeoff panel. We've got the back plate and then we've got our text plate. And all of these files are in the links below so you can go download these and not have to think about making them yourself. So all masked, paint both sides. Let's take the masking tape off and start applying the stickers. Do make the mask for the back plate make sure you pay attention to areas like on the left corner here and the bottom right is the top panel doesn't completely match the shape because of just how it's built and you don't want to accidentally mask off that area leaving a white gap so keep an eye out for that but that's what it looks like it looks pretty cool 
let's get on to putting the sticker on. You've got two options. You have what you saw me cut out, which is white print copy paper with the sticker there. Now we're gonna to need to use a glue stick to put this on. Not a bad backlighting option. So it's pretty translucent. It provides good transparency for any light to come through it. But another option you can use is these sticker sheets and I'm using Avery postage labels. But what I found out when I bought them and I didn't know until now, is they actually have what's called true block technology on them which is completely black. Absolutely no light passes through this at all. So it renders my backlighting option useless. So if you want to go down the option where you're not backlighting, these are pretty cool. Use these, very durable, good print quality on them. But if you are looking at printing them with backlight capability, just go for a piece of paper with the glue stick. So for the ease of this, I'm gonna use the true block technology and we're just gonna apply the sticker. And the reason you should let the ink dry well and truly, give it even a day, is so you can rub it and really push that adhesive onto the plate without smudging the ink. Look at that. That's actually not bad at all. That's very cool. Um, if you weren't combining laser cut panels and printed panels, and this was just what you knew, you really can't complain, it's really nice. Now I'm just gonna get a scalpel and run along the edge in case if there's a little bit of overlapping print. Very cool, that's done. What we're gonna do now is take our sharp scalpel, run it through our switch holes using the plastic to be our guide. That way we're gonna get a perfect circle. Now, if you find that some of your circles just aren't aligned, it's completely okay because one, it's expected, and two, you can use a bit of black paint, touch it up, and unless you're looking at it closely, looking for the imperfection, you're not gonna see it. And I really think this is a great alternative for VR pilots, where you're not looking at your cockpit every single time you play. You just want it to have the same shape and look cool when my friends come around. You don't need laser quality if you're not gonna see it while you're in game. And I'm just putting crosses into where the screw holes are because I don't actually need to cut them out. The screw will just push through. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's do one final detail correction before we go screw it to our base plate. Let's get yourself a black marker, a Sharpie, or even a whiteboard marker would work. And you just want to run it along the edge of your panel, just like this, very quick strokes. Don't let the Sharpie soak in, you want to be quick. And you just want to correct any white that you see and it's going to make it look 50,000 times better. Nice, okay, so that's done. You can always fix it with a Sharpie later. There's no rush to get that detail in. All right, that's looking very nice. Let's go and take some screws and put them together and finish this panel off.
And then we've got it. That actually looks real good. Let me quickly grab the laser cut panel. And other than a contrast difference of black paint versus black ink, they look, they look really good. They both in their own right have something great about them. I love the clarity and the precision of laser engraving. But how simple this was to make without needing to go out and buy an expensive laser cutter, I really believe is an entryway into building your own flight sim. So laying these out next to each other, they both are crystal clear. Yes, you can see this one's painted and this one was printed. But if we take this one away and we just look at what we've made, it looks damn incredible. It's for the simplicity of how to make it, the cheapness in it, it was about $4 worth of materials. The switches probably cost more than this actual structure combined. So it doesn't cost a lot to make. Real simple for anyone on varying skill levels to be able to construct. And it's backlightable, so that's pretty cool. So I hope you got something out of this, whether it be just a bit of inspiration for some upcoming projects, or it's a little push to get you over the fence to say, I don't need something expensive to get into this hobby. Scott just showed me that you can make it for $4 a panel and it's pretty cool. So stay safe, enjoy flight simming. I'll see you in the next episode. I wanna start getting more into building my Hornet pit and teaching you along the way. So we'll see you next video. Have a good rest of the week. Now, I bet you thought that I'd completely forgotten to show you the luminescent green. I haven't, I just had to wait for it to get dark outside so I could do a proper test. I wish I could tell you that it was the backlighting solution of the future. It's not. It, it, it's a cool effect. I think just 3D printing anything in glow in the dark is cool, but it, it lasts for about five, 10 minutes of like solid luminescence and then it just fades. So you're gonna need something underneath that panel to keep charging it up. So you may as well just have artificial backlighting. But what I did find, if I turn these over, that the white is actually quite a bit more opaque than the luminescent filament. And the luminescent filament actually turned out to be a lot nicer to backlight through. It was a lot more translucent. Now, if I can get my key light here, I'll just pull this here and stick it on the bench. You can, that's the white shining through. It's not a bad solution at all. It actually backlights quite well, but the problem is you need really bright light to get through it. If you pop the luminescent backing on, now I'm not sure how well we're gonna see that on camera with it auto exposing, but from seeing it in person, it is a lot nicer to backlight through the luminescent green than it is to actually backlight through the white. So if you are planning on backlighting and 3D printing your cockpit, have to think about using the luminescent green instead of white, purely because it is a little bit more transparent, allowing that LED backlighting to shine through a lot easier and you don't have to shine them as bright, bringing the overall warmth down in the room and the cockpit. So yeah, fun little tutorial. I hope it helped. Enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you in the next video.